by meeting of the Appointee for the Board of Directors. Uh, I'm Mark Fogel, the President, and we'll do a quick round of introductions, uh, starting with Matt over here. I'm Matt Moore. Uh, my family owns and operates Venice Beach Suites and Hotel on the Boardwalk. I'm Steve Hewitt. I think everybody here has heard about me before. Thank you. Uh, Tara Devine, uh, head of the Venice Beach Bit. Jay Goodfader, uh, my family owns the Sidewalk Cafe and Small Room Books and other properties. Uh, Jeremy Weinstein, my, uh, I work for NSB Associates, which uh, owns and manages property on 3rd Avenue as well as the Boardwalk. And we're in the main and Hamilton and Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Connie Brooks. I've been a live work resident in Venice for 23 years. and. Um, on the property um, near uh, Sunset and Hampton. Thank you. So, uh, once again, welcome everybody. Uh, and I wanted to make a few comments uh, before we really start business today. So, as a result of input from the board and uh, a number of people from the public, we are introducing some changes to the board meeting. Uh, to make meetings more productive in, in less than the two plus hours uh, that we have taken. We also believe these modifications will encourage greater participation. So here are some changes. Uh, change number one, we went more digital. This month we began using a custom MailChimp format to provide the meeting notice and agenda. Uh, if you signed up, for our email, you will receive it. As a reminder, meeting information, agendas, and minutes, once adopted, can be found on our website. Change number two, we will take all public comment at the top of the agenda. Anyone may speak on any matter, whether it is on the agenda or not. Uh, we recommend that public comment be on a topic over which the board has influence uh, or jurisdiction. However, there are no limitations. Today, we're going to allow a little bit of extra time for you to review the handouts we provided, complete a speaker card, and submit it to Quentin, who is sitting right over there. And uh, generally speaking, you will be provided uh, up to two minutes to make comments. And if we have a large number of commenters or other time constraints, uh, the time may be reduced so we can conduct business efficiently. So. Let's take, uh, it's 10.04 right now. Please make sure if you want to uh, make public comment, uh, let's take five minutes to, if you want to go uh, review and uh, obtain some of the handouts that were provided, please do. And we'll start the public comment period uh, shortly. One other reminder, the sort of last change is we, we've economically uh, provided our version of a podium. Thanks, Tara, for ordering that. Public comment will be made at that podium, and this is gonna be handled sort of in the same way. If you're familiar with the Los Angeles City Council meeting, I will call up uh, several speakers who can make their, their comments, and uh, when I call your name, please line up there, and we'll take them in order. So comment, public comment cards, uh, provide them to Quentin, and uh, I'll call the speakers, and you'll be uh, speaking from that podium. And thanks, we'll resume in, uh, in about five minutes.
minutes. Once again, if you'd like to make a public comment, we're going to do it at the top of the meeting. Please uh, fill out a, a comment card and hand it to Quentin, who is at this table right here. Okay, Quinnen, we'll pick the card. Any other cards? Card? Any other, any other card? Okay, so I'm going to call your name. Please go to the, the podium here to make your comments. Thank you. Uh, Melanie Murez and uh, Robert Farnham. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say to come up there? Yeah, come up to the podium right here. Thank you. Good morning. Hi. I'm Melanie Murez. Um, am I talking to you? Oh, no. Well, every okay. position so you did this before. Okay. Um, I'm a property owner, and as a matter of fact, just this morning, I saw the clean guys outside. I'm on Main Street, and they were sweeping the street, but they left all the leaves that were in front of, on the sidewalk, they just left them there. And I thought that it, they were more to clean, like, the sidewalk than the street. So, um... I've seen them at other times and it's been fine, but today, for some reason, they just swept all the leaves in the, in the, um, in the sidewalk. And can I make another like question? I signed something that said that I wanted to have the, uh, the tax money return. Do you know when that's happening? We'll, we'll address it, um, Robin. Oh, okay. We're gonna take notes. Um, we're, we're, uh, our public comment is reserved for your opportunity to come in. We take notes and, and uh, we'll be able to address that later in the meeting. Okay, Very right. important. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Robert Farnham. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Thank you. I'm Robert Farnham. Um, I own a couple of pieces of property on Hampton Drive, and uh, I've been down there for 38 years. <clears throat> it's been a speech auto body. Um, I was kind of forced into retirement because of some health issues I was having. By the grace of God, I'm here today and still battling my issues, but uh, I have not dealt with my taxes, so I'm now dealing with my tax bill just coming out of the woods of literally being bedridden. And um, 
I understand there's a rebate on the first year, and I'm just wondering about that because I got to get this tax rate squared away that I got going. So that was my question. Is that, is that mm -hmm. happening? Is that what it, because I know the thing's just starting, but got they charged me in the first year. And I'm just seeing them now sweeping me and so forth. It basically doubled my taxes, and I'm not real happy about it, but it's the way it is. So I'm here to uh, try to get an answer, see how I can deal with the taxes when I go down the pain. Thank you. So thanks. We'll, we'll address it and also available to talk after the meeting. Okay, maybe a number I can talk to somebody. Absolutely. Glad to talk. Uh, okay, next up. Colleen Saro and uh, George Francisco, please line up your neck. Um, so Hi, I'm Colleen Saro, uh, resident of Oceanfront Walk at the Beach House, um, also chairman of the Oceanfront Walk Committee through the BNC. So I'm speaking on behalf of the committee and as a resident because this has been coming, concerns have been coming to our committee the last two months. Uh, first of all, the cleanup on the boardwalk, the guys that are cleaning up, they've been very friendly. The vendors I've spoken to and the residents I've spoken to, they're really happy as far as what's going on with the boardwalk and even the streets that go to Speedway. Can't speak for anything past that, but um, I personally thank them. They've been very cordial, very nice. There's one gentleman that's just amazing and an older gentleman. So thank you for that. Main thing is the burps. Your security guys, first of all, shouldn't be on a bike on the boardwalk on a bike because that's illegal. So it's kind of difficult for them to enforce if they're breaking the law. And I talked to Bonin about this about a month ago, and he was supposed to relay the message to you guys. Uh, secondly, the guys on the bikes and the guys, well, I don't see any guys walking, claiming to know that they are not, that they don't know anything about the birds and the lines, that they are not supposed to be on the boardwalk. When I stop them and say, you need to ask those people to get off the boardwalk, go to Speedway, stay off the bike path. Oh, no one told us, no one told us. They're claiming ignorance at this point. So the, board, the boardwalk is part of y'all's jurisdiction. They should be enforcing that. It's getting horrendous on the boardwalk. It's getting horrendous on the bike path, which I know you guys will not take responsibility for. So y'all need to enforce your guys and, if that, and you're paying them and you need to get them off the bikes. They're not supposed to be on the bikes on the boardwalk. It's a law. Okay, so that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. George Francisco and uh, Marlene Okula here on deck. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank all you guys for uh, getting up and uh, doing the service for the community. Appreciate it. Um, I'd just like to tell you once again, your clean, uh, your, your clean teams are in front of my house every single day in front of our properties, our Main Street properties. It's a pleasure to see after so many years of living in Venice to actually see somebody clean in Venice. Um, it's fantastic. So uh, thank you to you guys and uh, thank you to the clean team. Thank you all a lot. Um, hopefully after you guys uh, regulate a little bit more and we get to this, you'll be able to step out and to be able to help the community with uh, mobility solutions. Um, you know, I'm not, not a big fan of the people who ride the birds, um, but it is a solution. I think there are other solutions too, and hopefully we did, as uh, you know, a business improvement district, we'll be able to step out and uh, be able to help us create some mobility solutions in Venice. Thank you all. Thank you, George. Okay, Marlene Okula, good morning. I just um, have a few questions um, regarding the income and balance statement, which I'm just looking at now that maybe you can point out to me. Um, does this reflect the refund that's going to be refunded to everyone? Where is, can you point that out to me? So I'm on both of those pages. <laughs> I did the balance sheet. Okay, I see that. Okay. I'm not supposed to be answering questions. Excuse me? So, we'll, we'll address it. We'll address it. We'll address it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an item on the agenda. We'll address it. Uh, okay, where, where it is. And also, um, I do not see where it reflects the salary of Tara Devine. Can you show that to me as well? Because I don't see that as an expenditure. I don't see that as spelled out. And I'd like to know, are there any other people on salary on the board? Well, we'll this, ask is, that. this is in a, a, okay. it's, it's a business question, but it's noted, and, okay. uh, and we'll address it. Thank yeah, you. I'd like to know. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
that concludes the public comment period. Thank you. And uh, we're going to move on to reports. And our first report is going to be the benefit safe team report, Pasadena Bella. And the format for these reports, uh, we use a question and answer format the first two meetings uh, as we launch services. But this will be a report. And if you have specific questions about uh, anything related to your property or other ones, please feel free to talk to one of us or uh, Aunt Susana or, of course, the Queen Team personnel. We're glad to assist you in any way we can. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to go over some of the completed items from the previous board meeting. Um, we have scheduled our meet and greet with our homeless community. It's scheduled for, at the Westminster Park um, for July 18th between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., as promised. Um, the safety team has all badges to identify them. Um, we have actually met with Becky Dennison to discuss coordinated efforts with our homeless community. And we have met with St. Joseph as well to provide direct referrals for those in our homeless community. Now I want to address the, the bikes and the, and the birds on the boardwalk a little more intensively. Um, we have started to do setup points um, at different areas of the boardwalk and we are off our bikes and we're trying to stop them. However, it has become an issue when they refuse to stop or us escorting them to the bike path. So being on the bikes becomes a lot more mobile and more agile. Now I understand that it creates that um, ambiguous situation. However, there is a little bit of leeway when we have our, um, our uniform on and the safety team approaches everyone. And um, normally and usually I would say about 99% of those that we do address have no issue um, going onto the bike path or the street. Um, this is an ongoing effort. It's, it's been ongoing for a really long time. I think that since we've launched, it's gonna be tomorrow two months. Um, we have, you know, have had great strides. We're not there yet, we're still working on it. But in order for us to continue to be able to do that, we need to be able to be mobile and agile to answer to other calls within the bid as well. So that's the importance of that. Um, as far as the bike path itself, we don't have jurisdiction to address anything there, so we cannot go on the bike path. Um, some of the highlights, however, on what the safety team has been directly involved in has been, um, we have been able to safely escort people to their vehicles, to venues, to um, general areas safely. Uh, we are con continuously providing direction to tourists, to community members. Um, it's just interesting the amount of people that will stop us for that. We are providing continued assistance with towing situations. Um, that is a constant chore on our part. I mean, that's, that's a regular here in Venice. We um, are enforcing the no smoking and no drinking on the boardwalk. That has been very successful. Um, it's gotten to the point where regulars in the community, at the minute they see us, they actually um, walk away to the side. Um, we are responding to noise, noise complaint, loitering, and trespassing. Um, that's been pretty successful. It just requires us to show up now and, and it kind of resolved itself. We have de we deterred vehicle thefts with our presence and assisted with documentation, both reports and theft. So we've actually been really super instrumental in just being visible and avoiding, um, you know, what was becoming a, con a considerable problem just with our presence. The other issue too is that we've had individuals come to us with reporting documentation and we're able to provide reports and then forward them to the LAPD to assist the person in getting some kind of restitution. Um, we have responded to numerous medical emergencies. We've been assisting employees, um, tourists, county employees, and the community. And actually some of these have actually resulted in hospitalization and, um, and one, more than one occasion unfortunately also re resulted in an arrest because it was a county employee. So in essence we have definitely been really busy. It's only been approximately two months and our requests and calls have increased numerously and we are hoping that we're going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you very much and, and also please thank your, the individual team members. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, our, the next item, item B, the Venice Beach bid clean team report. Ms. Polakoff and Mr. Williams, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Eleni Polakoff. I'm with Chrysalis and contact manager uh, working with our clean team here with the Venice Bids. 
is Paul. He finishes. Paul Williams, the Venice Clean Team Maintenance Supervisor. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, basically what I and I think people would consider a success story. We have uh, several workers experiencing different degrees of homelessness. One from the Venice area. Uh, we provided, you know, we do provide outreach even as I'm doing my job and my other workers are doing my job. Uh, another individual recently uh, inquired about the process of chrysalis and being able to gain employment and I'm happy to say that yesterday I needed a, a fill-in worker for a shift and the very first person that has graduated from the Santa Monica office uh, who is uh, living on the boardwalk uh, showed up for his shift. He will be getting more time. Uh, the word is starting to get out. Uh, to the residents, to people that are in Venice, that there, there, there is an option, and they're very enthusiastic, uh, and I'm looking forward to in the next few weeks, the next couple of classes at Chrysalis, getting some more candidates that go through the orientation, and we can put them to work right here in the community where they're currently living. Uh, we have been putting in probably three and a half to four hours a day power washing. Uh, of course, we answer all calls, and that's for anybody. If you call, we're going to come over, assess it, and we'll provide the power washing. Uh, generally, we just, I kind of maintain an even balance throughout the district, and as I walk around and as I'm driving around, as my workers are around, if we notice certain areas that might need attention, you know, we'll go and address those areas. Uh, we're in the process right now, uh, as we're going into our second and, and third month of doing this, we're gonna put together a schedule for some of our high density and, and more, more populated and traversed areas for a regular pressure washing that'll be scheduled for certain times every single month. Uh, graffiti, we, we, we tackle all graffiti. Uh, we've been getting some calls. Some of the businesses have been following the procedure and providing their own paint. If you provide your own paint color and there's something on your building, call us up. We'll come along. We'll remove that graffiti. If not, we you know have a standard palette of just some basic city colors that we can cover it up with. Uh, once again, all service calls, no matter the nature, uh, usually come in through me. And somebody, if, if not me, my driver is, you know, within the hour, usually most of the time, at least going, making contact and assessing whatever the call is and arranging to take care of it. Uh, in the month of June, we collected and disposed of between our workers and some of the other areas, 1,600 bags of trash. Uh, approximately 440 gra graffiti removals, some clustered, some single, some on our trash cans and our light poles, and put in approximately 106 hours of power washing. And that number is, as I said, is going to increase because we've done our initial launch, we've done a lot of the big stuff, we've assessed the district, so now we're gonna dedicate a larger amount of time to pressure washing. And I want to just stress again, at, at all times, just contact us. If you have an issue with, with anything that has to do with the clean team, just all you have to do is call, make it a service call. Somebody will contact you, and we will do whatever we need to to resolve it to your satisfaction. Uh, I know you mentioned earlier, ma'am, about the leaves on the sidewalk. I'm sure that's an oversight. You can be assured that it will be, it will be addressed and 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 should not happen again. Uh, besides from that, like I say, the community has been positive. Uh, all of the stakeholders and individual business owners that I've had contact with have been positive, and I just want to reiterate: we're here to serve. We're here to keep Venice clean. And if you have an issue. If you have a concern, no matter how small you might think it is, you have that right. You're you know, we're here to provide that service. Give us a call. We will come and address it. <coughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please thank the individual team members. We appreciate it. Yes. And it's very gratifying and, and quite 
amazing, in my opinion, that you're really helping people in the community. And that's it's really nice to see that. Thank you very much. And you're doing a lot of good for the bid area and Venice as a whole. Thank you very much. Please remember to thank the individual. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item four, our uh, consent items. The first item, item A, is the approval of the minutes for uh, April 13th, May 11th, June 13th, 2018 board meeting. Jeremy Weinstein. Uh, the minutes are in your package. Um, do any of the members of the board want to make any changes to the minutes? Any changes to the minutes? Then I no. move that we adopt the April 13th, May 11th, and June 13th minutes. Do you want to second that? I'll second. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. The minutes are approved. Thank you, Jeremy. And uh, we will move on to item B, financial reporting. Marcus Weaver. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All right, so my part isn't all that exciting, but so I'll try to keep it short and concise, but still give you a little insight into the kids' finances. Um, I'm aware of in your packet you have a balance sheet and income statement for the end of 2017, as well as for the month of June, which is what we would typically do is just present the month before, but in this case, we're also providing 2017 information. Um, the balance sheet and the statement for 17 are not very extensive. It's pretty straightforward. It provides you with the current cash, the current cash balance is at 1231 in various accounts, money market accounts, operating accounts. Also, um, a collateral account for the bid CD, but they do not uh, have credit established at the time, so the bank required a uh, collateral account, which will only be needed for a specific period of time, but not extensive. Uh, there's also prepaid expenses. Um, and accounts payable, which represents any payables due at year end, but not yet paid. Uh, Marcus, one of the questions that came up earlier during public comment was, uh, do these documents uh, for 2017 reflect the assessment refunds? Uh, they do not. I was going to mention that. So, neither the 2017 financials nor the June financials do reflect any refund of assessments. Um, it's my understanding that we're still waiting for the city to tell us what that exact number is. So, if we have that, we can incorporate that into the financials going forward. Uh, there was another question regarding salaries and uh, Tara's compensation. So Tara's is included under consultants, uh, and there is an employee. And you'll, if you look at the June financials, you'll see salary expenses, and the employee's expenses are listed in that line, in those line items categories. All right, so we can move on to the June financials. So the, just like the 2017 financials, the balance sheet shows the current cash at 630, which you can see is 1.2 uh, to 90. It has that same collateral CD account, accounts payable, very, very straightforward. Um, office furniture and equipment, uh, those are purchases made for the new office and will be depreciated in. Uh, there's also security deposit for the office lease uh, and accrued expenses. So any expenses that we know that we incurred in the month of June but you have yet to be invoiced by the vendor, if we're aware of those, then we account for them in the proper period. Okay. And then as far as the income statement. So the income statement we use, I know for all of you that were here in the prior meeting, We'll report the actual expenses for that month and then the total year to date. So, so the first column shows what we spent in June for those expense items and also money that came in. In this case, there was no income that came in, no assessment. 
And then if you move over to the fifth column, year to date actual, that's total for those expenses and uh, income through June. And then we compare that to what we budgeted for both the month and the year. And then you have a variance column that shows percentage variance in dollar variance. So we typically will want to look if there's any large variance, then we want to look into why. So we look in the detail behind that number and see, okay, why why is this over? What do we buy? Maybe there's a valid reason for it, maybe it's a one-time thing, or okay, this is gonna cost more going forward, so we need to account for that when we prepare the 2019. So this is not too much to point out on the June income statement. Uh, salary, the benefits on clean and safe is, is uh, quite a bit under budget, and that's because uh, the bid had planned to hire a dispatcher, but they're actually using dispatch services of Ally for the time being. Uh, that may change, that's a question you'll have to ask uh, Tara and Steve. Um, we still intend to hire a full-time <coughs> person, but we're taking a careful look at that position and just trying to right now. Okay. And then also, I know there's also a clean and safe um, uh, repair and maintenance. It's it's over budget again, like last month. Because there's still one-time expenses that were incurred in just setting up the events offices for clean and safe and for admin. So we should see that uh, get more in line with the budget in the coming months. Uh, and I believe that includes some more tenant improvements to the police office space. Uh, telephone and internet, once again, and some one-time additional cost of just getting everything set up properly so phone systems work and, and the bid has what they need to conduct business properly. Only a couple other things, salaries and district identity and special projects. It's a little over because it includes some <coughs> May salary expense that was not processed until June once we got the payroll account set up with EDP. And lastly, your office expenses and admin and management. You'll see that number is, is uh, quite a bit over the budget amount. And it's a one-time cost or upfront cost related to a leased copy. That's, that's really what I have. Um, I would also mention utilities are over because there are deposits uh, involved in setting up the account, so that would be the variance there. Um, and then insurance is generally going to show as a variance because the insurance, uh, we don't finance it, we pay the premium in a lump sum. So by the end of the year, that number will even out, but until then, it will appear as a large variance because it's all in one particular lump. So yeah, because we paid it all up front instead of right. small but increments. By the end of the year, the variance should be zero. Correct. Because we parked it. Yeah, typically they'll charge a service fee if you break out the payments over a period of time and it's not as efficient, so we just pay it up front be done with it. So you will see it diminish as Tara pointed out. I suppose it may still vary slightly because from year to year insurance costs can change, so we do our best to estimate what they will be, but we don't necessarily know until we actually apply for coverage and receive a quote. So sometimes there is a little bit of a variance on insurance as well. Yeah, I, and I would add that I think Marlene asked about uh, if any of the board members or anybody else was receiving a salary. And, and, and just to clarify, there have been some comments before where there might be confusion. Right. I am not a member of the board. I am uh, the CEO of the bid, um, and so I'm here to help facilitate this discussion and, and board meeting, but I'm not, a, you'll notice I don't vote. I'm not a member of the board. But other people around me, with the exception of Marcus, are members of the board. They receive no compensation for any of the work that they do, and many of them do quite a bit of work. <laughs> yeah, well, Quentin receives a salary. So it, just to be clear, none of the board yes. members do. Quentin and, Quentin. Quentin and I are currently the only salaried employees. We do eventually intend to have our dispatcher position be a salaried position, so we're still working on that. Okay, so uh, is there a motion 
subject to modification for the assessment refund and any other items that may need to be modified. Uh, is there a motion to ratify the June 2018 balance sheet uh, and income statement and the 2017 income statement and balance sheet? Yes, sir. Mr. Treasurer, I make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to item five, new business. 5A is a motion regarding the baseline service agreement. This is something that was very important to me and a number of other board members uh, when we started researching the idea of, of forming a bid uh, over four years ago. And during the formation process, the city agreed to provide a baseline services agreement. And this is a document that will identify and quantify the primary services and service frequencies uh, that are provided by the city of Los Angeles in the bid area. It's called a baseline services agreement. To date, we have not received this agreement. Uh, it's unclear whether the city uh, has begun preparing it or not. Uh, a number of board members and staff have requested the document a number of times over a period of approximately 18 months. It's, it's my hope that a board resolution today will accelerate the production of this important document uh, and help the city understand how vital it is for the bid in order for us to provide services that are supplementary and complementary rather than duplicative. Uh, property owners in our bid are paying taxes and, and also an assessment and the city, the bid needs to be able to communicate with the stakeholders, including the city, how its services align rather than duplicate city services. So we prepared a, uh, the adoption of a, a resolution, which I'm gonna read, and then we can discuss it as it were. So whereas the city of Los Angeles adopted the Economic Development Committee report on August 24, 2016, and subsequently reaffirmed its adoption on November 9th, 2016, and Whereas said Economic Development Committee report reads as follows. Reaffirmed City Council's June 29, 2016 action to request the Department of Recreation and Parks and the Board of Public Works to designate a liaison to coordinate with the City Clerk and prepare a baseline services agreement for the proposed Venice Beach bid. And whereas the Venice Beach Property Owners Association contract with the City reads as follows. The city currently intends that the level of services presently being provided by the city in the area within the district, the baseline service level, in quotes, will not be affected by the establishment of the district or the levying of the assessment. And whereas neither the city nor the Venice Beach Property Owners Association can assess whether or not the baseline service level is being maintained in the absence of said baseline services agreement, Therefore, the Venice Beach Property Owners Association, the Venice Beach Bid Board of Directors, respectfully reiterates its many requests for the city to develop and furnish a baseline services agreement. So that's the resolution that I'm recommending uh, we adopt, and I want to open it up to the board to discuss uh, something that I know many of us believe is extremely important. Any questions or comments on this? I will add a little bit for context. Um, uh, I, I have certainly requested this agreement many times. I know a couple members of the board in their con conversation with the clerk's office also reiterated how important this is. Um, the division that oversees bids has been down a few staff, including the staff person who has, I think the only, perhaps the only staff person who has prepared one of these in the past. Um, so, while there, there are some understandable or sympathetic reasons why we have not received it, um, we are really at the point where I don't believe they fully understand the importance of why we want this document, and they've done our best to convey that, um, and it's my hope that a board resolution will um, further encourage that. I would, I would say 18 months request is, is way too long. I'm gonna suggest that we talk to Taylor and Mike Bonnet about this because we really need to get this done. So we appreciate any help and uh, we hope that this resolution 
we hopefully adopt today will help move in that direction to get it done quickly. Does that bill go through the debate for the city council or does it go to city clerks? I mean, I, I, I think that um, according to the resolution, it goes to it will go to the Department of Recreation, Parks, and the Board of Public Works, okay. which will have they have jurisdiction over the services, and that would also direct it. Um, or copy the so city council office. That's what I would recommend. So yeah. whoever who does this, it's the Who's supervisor, right? Or basically, mm -hmm. does it go above in, the person who head? Okay. In the past, when this has been done, the city clerk takes the lead on reaching out to those departments, uh, explaining to them the purpose of this document because they're the ones who understand things and why this document is being requested. So usually, the city clerk's office takes the lead in reaching out to those departments. Those departments are requested to prepare um, a written report back, and then the city clerk usually combines or, or, or um, collates that information into a base of services. Okay. Do we know if other Los Angeles bids have? That document. I mean, we were promised a document in our contract, and in, in, our, in, in their was it in their ordinance that established the bid? Um, it it was in the reports that were adopted by council as part of our promotion. Okay. So it was in um, it was originally in the economic development committee report, and then there are subsequent actions that include the economic development. So it's I mean, and for very good reason. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm just wondering if the city has delayed other bids or if you know that. Um, I do not know how many bids have a baseline services agreement. I am aware of uh, one instance in the past. Um, I recall I recall one. I actually don't even recall which bid it is off the top of my head, but I know at least one other bid has a baseline service agreement. Well, I don't know how many more. I just think it's you know really important that we make sure that the city continues to give us at least the service that they always did and that they're not able to you know say oh well you have a bid there and you're taking care of this and we back away i mean the point is not for us to pay extra tax for the same thing the person who has prepared the one that i'm aware of uh, uh was out uh, has been out on medical leave since the latter part of last year, and it has extended and extended. It was supposed to be a couple months, and it's extended and extended. Um, I think perhaps they were hoping she'd come back to do it, um, but I don't know that that's um, where you can make the first request. So <laughs> at this point, we'd like them to figure out a way to get it done. Any other questions, Helen? And I will say we appreciate their support and their help on so many other issues. That's wonderful, but it's really tough to be two months into operation and still not have anything that enumerates exactly what the frequency is for street sweeping or for cleaning the restrooms or those sorts of things. I mean, we've had anecdotal conversations with the departments responsible for those. We don't really have anything that quantifies that. And that would be very, very helpful, very informative to our clean and safe team. It helps us make more intelligent decisions about how to deploy our resources so that we're complementing rather than duplicating things. Um, knowing the schedule that they're doing certain things helps us find a, uh, a way to perhaps maximize if they're doing something on a Tuesday, perhaps we can do it on a Friday and then we provide better coverage for the week, things like that. So those are all sorts of things that really help us and the reason why we're asking for the baseline services agreement. And despite explaining it, I'm not sure that some of the staff really understand how important it is to us and the operations. Imagine how the public feels. Okay, are there any other questions or comments on, on this item? Um, once again, I think it's extremely important and, and uh, I'm hoping that you and Mike can help us out with it. Because it's important, it really is important for the district and for all of it. We've mentioned this to them before. Okay. I've talked to Molly before about okay. this. We'll have to. We'll have to. Yeah, we'll to it. Hopefully, this, re this resolution will help. So, is there a motion uh, for the Venice Beach Property Owners Association Venice Beach bid to reiterate uh, in a letter its many requests for the city to develop and furnish a baseline services agreement? Okay. Is there a second? All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, next item is item C. Uh, 
excuse me, item B, agreement with Alton and Bird for legal services. Uh, Tara Devine. Um, there is a copy of Alston Bird's uh, engagement letter at the back of the room. Um, in uh, very late 2016, shortly after the bid uh, formation uh, and adoption by City Council, um, we were served in a lawsuit uh, by approximately five um, property owners in the district um, with, I believe, uh, I believe there were two parties to the suit who had never contacted us for information. There were three or four property owners um, with whom we had spoken during formation, uh, and they did not support uh, the formation. Um, the lawsuit, uh, the original filing alleged certain things. Uh, as the lawsuit uh, progressed, other things were alleged, etc. Um, the uh, final ruling in this case came down in. It was April or, or early May, um, and that ruling uh, that was issued uh, found in our favor on all five counts, all five arguments uh, that were articulated uh, by the plaintiff and their attorneys. Uh, the judge ruled in favor of the Business Improvement District and the Property Owners Association on all five of those counts. Um, we uh, selected our attorney. Uh, we actually uh, we sought uh, uh, attorneys who had experience in this particular area uh, of municipal law. Uh, we ultimately interviewed uh, four firms that all had experience in this area uh, and selected the one that we thought uh, best understood uh, this area of law and this particular situation. Um, the appeal period for this lawsuit uh, recently expired. Um, we're happy to report that the lawsuit was not appealed. Um, so this is over. Right, boy. Can you can you talk about the uh, can you talk about the selection process a little bit more? Just how we do um, that? Sure. Uh, we, we did approximately one hour interviews uh, with four different uh, law firms over two different days. Um, we I think uh, ended up we had very minimal uh, debate. There was one law firm that particularly I think stood out to all of us. Um, there were two that were quite good that we, were, we really liked, um, but there was one that clearly seemed um, to understand this area of law the best, um, and that's what we based our decision on. Thank you. Any other, uh, any questions or comments from the board on, on this uh, agreement with Austin and Bird? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion to ratify the Austin and Bird Legal Services Agreement? Is there a motion? Yeah, thank you. I make a that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jake. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. That contract is ratified. So we're moving on to item C. This is uh, the agreement with Divine Strategies for Ooh. Management Services. The board executed and and the attached agreement with Divine Strategies in 2017 um, and subsequently executed amendments to, to mutually delay the payment of her respective fees until the bid received its first assessment revenue in August of 2017. So from January 1st to mid-August, uh, about a seven and a half month period, Tara worked on the bid contract and exhibits the bid procurement of insurance, the bid litigation, and various setup activities with all compensation uh, deferred until the bid received its funding. Um, Tara has worked with this board since late 2014 to form this bid and frankly done an incredible job. She came recommended to me by uh, Blair Bestin, who runs another uh, respected bid in the city of Los Angeles. I spoke to Tara for over an hour, my first conversation, and uh, was very impressed with her level of knowledge about bids, and uh, and subsequently introduced her to a number of the other property owners who were equally as impressed. Um, since 2014 till today, we've learned how incredibly knowledgeable she is about bids. Um, and it's a very detailed area uh, in, 
and she understands biz in Los Angeles and beyond. She participates in bid consortiums. She knows bids. Uh, we were impressed with her work ethic, her thoughtful ideas, and her focuses on best practices. I was very pleased when Tara agreed to serve under contract as the initial CEO of this new bid, and we're still very thankful uh, for your service. I really appreciate your service. So while many bids are run by direct employees, there are several bids across LA that are managed under contract, like in this case. Tara's current and ongoing compensation is $13,925 per month, which equates to a total annual competition, compensation of $160,100. She is fully responsible for her own payroll and other taxes, medical and dental insurance, liability insurance, etc. Her lower compensation in 2017 reflects the lighter workload for those months. So she was paid basically commensurate to the workload, although I would add that uh, her compensation today, her the workload greatly exceeds even the compensation, I must say. She worked day and night, um, and I think everyone here can vouch for that. So the, the agreement is a month-to-month -month agreement. Tara has a five, there's a five-day notice for uh, required for termination due to non-performance, and otherwise a fair 30-day notice is required for termination for any other reason. Uh, so that basically summarizes the agreement. Are there any comments or questions from the board regarding the contract? I just want to say it's been my pleasure to meet you on the era. You know, not only is she extremely knowledgeable about bids, but she's just such a capable person. She would be successful, extremely successful in anything that she undertook. And she's also a kind person, a funny person, a wonderful person. I really enjoy working with her. I just want to say, as the newest board member, I came on not really knowing what to expect because I had heard a lot of things in the community, and I'm happy to say that I agree with everything that everyone has said. I mean, Tara, for whatever reason, has maybe had, okay, I'm not even going to say that. She, uh -oh. she is a Here she's an amazing she's an amazing person with a very warm disposition and if you actually speak with her outside of board meetings and outside of areas where she has to be extremely professional and extremely by the book because she is doing a public service which is very visible and very criticizable. Um, and she does perform with a lot of grace under pressure and, and has really, as Mark said, you know, she'll work all night if she has to to get something done to make sure it's right. So I, I have to say that while I was not 100% knowledgeable, as I have become more knowledgeable, I have really seen the dedication that this board does put out and you can't please everybody but I do I have learned that they are truly trying their hardest thank you um, I, I mean I've been a part of the good formation process now for almost four years um, it has been an uphill slog and good. most other people would have quit long long ago um, you know, when you have the, the level of, of uh, sometimes vitriol talks at you, uh, it becomes difficult and you have endured it uh, with a lot of grace and you have gotten us to a point where we are now actually doing good and, and going through and seeing, seeing people out working, cleaning, maintaining the community. It's, um, when you look back, you know, oh yeah, it's easy because it got done, but it was not easy. And so um, I want to say thank you. Thank you. I, I've been very, very impressed uh, by the due diligence that Tara undertakes for basically everything relating to this bid, uh, especially the most important
important decisions we made regarding um, the clean and safe services. The RFP process was incredibly thorough and we interviewed people. We went and visited bids, uh, other bids. We talked to people working on the street. This was all organized by you, Tara. And I, it, I, I think we all felt incredibly comfortable making the decisions we did based on the foundation that you set uh, for us to make that decision. And I know we all take the decisions we make and the, the agreements we sign and the things that we approve very seriously. And you frank, frankly exceeded uh, my expectations in the amount of preparation that you put in to this whole process. And, uh, and, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like, I'd like to add on that that there are, in, in a formation of an organization like this, there are a lot of decisions that can pop up where you have, you might have three good choices, but only one slot. And one of the, the moments that I felt showed your strength and vision the most was when we were interviewing candidates to determine who was going to be the supervisor of the safe team. And there were good people that we could have chosen, but you had a patience and a level of expectation of this is a very important person that is going to have an incredible impact on the community, and that led us to find and hire out Susanna, who's an incredible asset. And so what could have been a more impulsive decision or a choosing a B rather than an A decision, you were able to guide that, among many other decisions, for us to try to have the patience to find the A rather than just settling for the B. And, and I, I think you always have that sort of step back and review vision that reduces impulsivity. And I think it's so, very tactful. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment. Okay, this is uh, the public comment section is closed. We're glad to talk after the meeting. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can talk to us. But the public comment section I, I is, is, is closed. Okay. Uh, we're gonna. Are there any comments or questions on uh, on the uh, agreement, the divine services agreement? Okay. I'll keep it really short, but I just okay. want to say that it has been a joy to work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Is, is there a motion to ratify the existing agreement with Divine Strategies for uh, for management services? Is there a second? I'll say second. Matt, thank you for the second. All in favor, raise your hand. <coughs> Pass unanimously, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we're moving on to Item item D, uh, which is a proposal from, for, please, please sit down and don't disrupt the meeting. Propo the, the next item, item D, is a proposal from Tornado Creative for website, newsletter, and related services. Uh, thank you, Connie Brooks. First, thank you for all the work that you've done uh, on our creative and for the work you've done to enhance our website and the different sections. It's becoming built out amazingly and we look forward to more things, more to come. And Go quite ahead. quickly. <laughs> so my pro bono work um, is all about communications, and I think all of us in this room, and certainly all of us on this board, feel that we need to be accountable to all of you. And one of the ways that we want to be accountable is doing a monthly update, which we couldn't get out this month, but it will be out, I mean, at this meeting, but it will be out by the end of the month just to kind of sum up and give people, at, at a glance, a snapshot of what's been accomplished so you guys can see what's happening. And in order to do that, because there is only Tara and Quentin, um, the most cost-effective way was to hire Tornado, who helped us build out the initial website, to continue keeping the website up, helping us do this monthly flyer, and if there's any other things that arise, such as the um, program that we're doing with homeless outreach, that can be gotten out to the community. So there, 
one of the least expensive firms, yet they do a tremendous job. So that's why we talk to them about what they could do minimally to help us through the end of the year. And if some of that can ultimately be taken in-house, if they're staffing, um, then we'll look at that. But for this year, it's much cheaper to have someone else help us because otherwise these reports aren't timely. And we feel we need to be accountable to you in a timely manner. So that's why we looked at how, having them help us. Uh, it also helps us with compliance with Brown Act posting on the website of our agendas, minutes, etc. Um, the firm has, been, I have to say, the firm has been really wonderful to work with. They've done really great work. Um, they uh, they are um, very readily available as well, which is really helpful for things you know like posting of agendas, etc. Um, they're very accessible. They respond very quickly, um, and I've been very happy with their performance. So I would uh, add to. Uh, this for the board that I would recommend um, that we proceed. I think this is uh, a fairly economical budget um, for some basic ongoing needs that we'll have through the end of the year. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So the the infrastructure that we're building for our website is it such that we can through our own staff eventually take on the uh, updating adding photos, et cetera, or is that, is that the way we're building? Yeah, if there's someone that has, you know, an, a technical savvy and an ability, it's, it's not a complicated setup. It's the least complicated, but it still requires a certain amount of know-how and design sense. It's a WordPress site. No, I don't think it even is a WordPress. Um, he, that they, they've definitely given us a template that is user, as user-friendly as you can okay. get. So the answer is a qualified yes. Okay. And um, one thing to keep in mind as well is that a lot of the things we produce, you know, in this age, you need to convert them to multiple formats. And so, for example, you know, Mailchimp templates are something I can do. I don't do them uh, half as fast as Tornado can do them, for example. So, um, for example, I can. It's easier for me to modify them and and help with that on an ongoing basis than it is for me to set up some of those things. For example. So part of it is is catering to skill sets. I have many skill sets. Um, setting up a Mailchimp newsletter is not one of my fastest or best, um, for sure, and it wouldn't probably look half as good as it does if I did it. So well, things like that. Well, and, and again, I mean, I really want to stress the timeliness. I. Right. So it's super important to be accountable to the community in a timely basis. And I know that some of the issues that have come up have been because that's where we fall behind on communication. <clears throat> and why we fall behind is because it's more pressing to get the clean and safe sort of done. It's more pressing to make sure that you know things are being done, but yet if the community doesn't know they're being done, and we don't feel good, we as a community don't feel good about them. So that's why we're looking at this minimal amount to make sure that we can, during this still semi-formative period, make sure at the end of the year that we can get that information out to everyone in a timely manner. And after that, being the next year, we can reevaluate. It may make sense to continue, it may not, but we really feel that to continue communicating in this timely fashion, we need a little help. I have two things to add on where, one, just based on my own experience with what I currently spend with my own business for similar services, this is a very reasonable it's cost. Really low. And even if it wasn't, there's a protective mechanism in here where they can't, they can't bill any overages unless it's proved in advance. So exactly. it's a very, that's why we wrote it it's a very way. low risk convenient reward setup. For context, our original website, our original contract with them for website and some other tasks uh, was about 13,000-ish. Um, and I will say that they did uh, virtually all work within the scope of that contract that we've needed over the last couple of months. There were a couple of uh, very small one-off uh, special requests and things that we asked them to assist with. Um, we paid for those separately, but they were in total very minimal. I don't think they uh, rose above a thousand, <coughs> additional thousand dollars. And those were just things that we obviously didn't foresee at the time of the contract, and we used their services for some small little additional items. Mm -hmm. So and, and, um, I don't anticipate that we'll have a lot of uh, overtime or overdue on this contract. Either. 
And the two other quotes we got were, were fast. more than twice as much to do the website. So yes, we have tried very hard to find someone who is good, but the lowest possible cost. I'd also like to add anecdotally, I mean, it's not the nuts and bolts of this, but just anecdotally, I've gotten a lot of stakeholder and tourist and friend and vendor feedback that the overall branding and color scheme that Tornado did champion has been very well received. So, sort of part and parcel. Any other questions or comments? Um, if you are looking at the website, if you have any um, suggestions, feedback, etc., um, we have a way that you can submit them via the website, or you can call our email staff, um, and we'll try to look at incorporating those. Um, we're, our, our pattern is a little bit at a time. We're trying to add a little bit each month. Uh, so uh, we may not be able to do everything right away, um, but I think we're, we're steadily improving. Great. Connie, thanks so much for all, all your efforts and, and time. We appreciate it, and the, the product looks really good. So, I, I think it's important. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the proposal from Tornado Creative for website, newsletter, and related services? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. I got Jay. Meyer, you, you, Jay, you, sure. you've got a second. Okay, all in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. We are going to move on to uh, the CEO's report. Chair of mine. Uh, I, uh, Austin Zama did mention it earlier in the meeting, but I did also uh, want to kind of connect the dot. Um, we are hosting uh, next month on the 18th. Um, just a very uh, informal open house um, for the members of our community that are experiencing homelessness. Um, we want. Can you speak uh, up a little bit? It's hard to hear you back there. We we are hosting an event on the 18th, um, a very casual format open house um, for the members of our district who are experiencing homelessness uh, to come and talk to uh, both clean and safe team staff, office staff, and I actually have board member volunteers as well. Um, we want to answer questions or concerns that they have. We want to hear um, their feedback on things that make them feel unsafe in their community. Um, we know that uh, they themselves are often the victims of crime um, and other issues in their community. Uh, so we want to begin a dialogue with them uh, and again, answer their concerns or questions. Um, there were some public comments raised today that I will respond to. Um, in terms of refunds, unfortunately, I do not have an update from the city. I reached out to them uh, as recently as last week. Uh, I do know that they have received uh, your affidavits uh, for the most part, and they are going through them and processing them. Um, I imagine, uh, based on other uh, similar types of documentation that they process, I imagine there may be some where they have to follow up or ask you questions or things like that. If you hear from them, uh, please respond to them. They may not be able to process uh, your refund until you clarify uh, clarify whatever information they need. Um, I do not know specifically when they will be issuing the refunds. I do not think it will be a lengthy delay, but I don't have a specific target date. I expect that for those whose paperwork is complete and submitted and accepted, um, I would, to the best of my knowledge, it should not be more than another 30 or so days. I don't believe it will be lengthy. Um, uh, there also, I, I believe this is again my understanding, uh, what I've been told, uh, there are the first wave of refunds that were processed were people who paid their assessment in full for 2017. Um, there were some people who had not paid them or who made a partial payment. Um, so they were actually handling the uh, refund process for those who paid the full assessment first and then they were doing a second wave to deal with uh, people who had not, uh, either not paid their assessment or paid a partial assessment because that required uh, additional work on their part. Um, so if you paid a partial assessment or did not pay your assessment and have not received documentation yet, um, that would be why. Um, but I believe they expect to start on the second wave uh, in the not too distant future as well. Um, on Sorry, could you clarify um, that? Could you speak 
Does that mean that checks have been sent out already? Not to my knowledge, but oh. as, as of last week, my understanding is no. Okay. Uh, I do not know when they plan to send them. Uh, we've we've also we asked as recently as last week for the total amount of the refunds and we don't have that either so um, so we're in the same boat you are <laughs> um, we'll definitely provide an update when we do know more um, Colleen was addressed by Susanna uh, and actually, uh, the other comments were addressed in the uh, in the budget section, in the financial report section. So I think that's all I have on my list for today. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to all of you who do come each month and provide us with input and feedback, uh, regardless of what that feedback is. Um, you do uh, challenge us to think. Um, you do challenge us to respond. So. We do listen. I know everyone at this table does listen. Um, and there are a lot of things that we've done um, or undertaken as a result of that feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Uh, if anyone has any other questions after the meeting, feel free to talk to us. If you have service requests or need anything related to clean and safe, remind us what's the phone number for our dispatch? 310 396 8243? 8243. Thank you. I'm not great at remembering phone yeah. numbers. Thank you. We have responsible uh, and very responsive clean and safe teams, and, and uh, it's our goal to, to get out there and take care of your needs as they arrive. Um, and for those of you, if you have tenants um, that you would like to discreet, or if you would like a card, um, but if, especially if you have tenants as well that you'd like to dis, uh, distribute cards to, we have clean and safe cards that have our phone number on it. Um, so you can request those uh, by calling the office, by calling that number, or you can request those via email admin at venicebeachbid.com and we'll be happy to let us know how many you'd like and we can send those to you if you'd like to give those to your tenants. Okay. And our clean and safe teams usually have them in the field as well, so if you see them, uh, you could approach them and ask them for a card. So we give them, pardon, give, excuse me, we give the, the cards to these people, or we give the no. cards to you? What's the benefit of give, doing a card? No, the, the card has our phone number on it. So I think most of you here know our phone number, you know our website, our website has the phone number as well, but if you would like to share business cards with, for example, many people here have a tenant, whether it's residential or business, if you'd like to distribute those to your tenants, let us know. We can send. We can drop off to you a little stack of cards if you want to distribute them. What I want to know is. Let's take this up after the meeting. We'll, we can we can address these individual concerns and we're glad to. But we're going to uh, we're going to adjourn the meeting right now. It's eleven fifteen. Thanks uh, to everyone here for attending. We appreciate it, and thanks to the board. So the meeting's adjourned. Uh -huh.